good morning, Lionhearts. Your old pal Jordan the Lion, and we are coming to you from Macon, Georgia, downtown Macon, Georgia. And what I want to start the vlog with today, since today is day two of the Almond Brothers Band, let's go to the record label, or at least where they recorded their records early on. I'll show you what it is now and how they're trying to memorialize it. They destroyed the building that was Capricorn Records. It started in 1969 by Phil and Alan Walden. But now they've decided to put up some condos called the Capricorn Lofts. And apparently what they're planning on doing is they're gonna renovate this block and recreate Capricorn Studios, turn it back into not only a recording studio, but also plan on opening rehearsal spaces above it. And they're gonna go off of the same exact floor plan and layout as what the original Capricorn Records once was. Kind of an interesting idea paying homage to the Allman Brothers and Marshall Tucker Band, all the people that got started here. The Allman Brothers recorded a lot of their stuff from like 1969, 70, all the way till 73 here. So it's gonna be nice. It's a great idea and it kind of reminds me of what they did over at the Stax Museum. The building had been torn down so they didn't really have much of an option but to, if they wanted to give you that authentic feel, you really had to rebuild the thing from the blueprint, so that's what they're gonna do here. And there they do have a little memorial here. Recording studio of Capricorn Records, creator of Southern Rock. That's what it looks like right now. And you can see here they've already started by calling this the Capricorn Lofts. So today our plan is we're gonna take you to the crash site of Dwayne Allman, Barry Oakley's crash site. We're gonna go to the cemetery where the Allman Brothers used to go and hang out and jam, and we're gonna go look at the Bond Memorial. We're going to find the um, grave of Elizabeth Reed from the song In Memory of Elizabeth Reed. We're gonna find the Little Martha statue as memorialized in Little Martha, and then we are going to go to Barry Oakley's grave, Dwayne Allman's grave, and finish up with Greg Allman's grave. Now let me share something really interesting with you you may not know, and if you're a big Allman Brothers fan, this may be a surprise to you, but that being Capricorn Records, Greg Allman says that if you walk straight out of Capricorn Records, across the street was an alleyway, and that's where they took the photo for Live at the Fillmore East. Now that may be a surprise because a lot of people think that they actually took that photo at the Fillmore. No, they originally took a photo under the marquee of the Fillmore, and then when they got the photos back, they weren't happy with it. So what they did was they had the roadies stencil up all their gear with all that Almond Brothers Macon, Georgia stuff. And then at the time, there was an alleyway right here because the building that had been here had burned down. So this wall, and there was a, a, an online site where the guy, there was someone who did a lot of tracking down um, and he found overhead shots where there used to be a building here. So that's how I was able to go, yep, that totally makes sense to me. And this building was resurfaced a few years ago with new bricks and with those ribbings, that, that bracing up the side, that wasn't originally there, but the actual album cover would have originally been taken right here. Those wouldn't have been there, that wouldn't have been there, but they took it right there and they said, um, a lot of people, thought it was actually this wall because that used to be the Jesus Saves building. It used to have a big Jesus Saves across the top of it. That definitely wasn't it because before they put the Capricorn Loft, which I just showed you, before that was there, right beside Capricorn right here, it was a Pepsi bottling company factory. So there would have been no walkway in between there. It actually went all the way to the, the building. So this was the old mercantile building, so this is what it would have been. It would have actually been right there against that wall, the previous version of the wall. Now I mentioned in yesterday's vlog that there was a crazy story about that photo. They have this like weird, goofy grin on all their faces. Now here's what happened. They had been taking quite a few photos and Jim Marshall, who took the photos, was having trouble getting them to laugh or smile or anything. And Dwayne was expecting his drug dealer to drop off some drugs for him. So. Um, right at the moment that Jim said, okay guys, I'm gonna swap film, uh, put one more roll in, and then we'll call it a day after that, he actually turned his back and started putting the, the roll of film in, and right then, Dwayne's dealer walked up along the sidewalk over there, and so Dwayne ran over, grabbed his stuff, 
ran back over, threw it in the, the, his back pocket before Jim ever turned around, so Jim never knew any of that happened. And so they said when he was ready to take the photo, all the guys were laughing about that. So that's kind of the crazy background story to the cover of Live at the Fillmore East. And I'll tell you another way you can kind of tell, you know, those windows weren't there, that ribbing and everything wasn't there. But if you go over to here, the building right beside it, they didn't do anything to the brick on that building. They haven't changed that. So you'll see if you look at this type of brick, this old brick, the original brick, that's the same exact type of brick that's on that album cover. That would have been more like the brick that we saw. So then on the back cover of the album jacket, you see all the roadies in front of all the gear that they had stenciled. <laughs> you also see them holding a bunch of PBR, Pass Blue Ribbon. That was because that was what the guys paid him in for doing all that stenciling. They paid him in a pack of PBRs. And because of that being on the back of that record and it being so popular, PBR had a big surge in sales that year. We're gonna take you back to October 29th, 1971. It was Linda Oakley's birthday. Dwayne had just stopped by to say hello, wish her happy birthday, got on his motorcycle, and headed out to where we're going. Now he made this left turn on Hillcrest. He was riding his motorcycle down this street, and in just a few blocks, he'd veer off, crash. So as Dwayne traveled down this hill, there was actually a truck that was trying to make a right turn and so Dwayne tried to go around it, clipped the back of the truck and it shot him over and he and the bike I believe slid right into right over here. It says right into one of the corners so it either been one of these and um, I mean, this is like just shy of his birthday. He, um, they said he was revived a couple of times, but when the guy from the truck realized what happened, he got out, came over and saw uh, Dwayne and his bike. The bike was actually still running. So if Dwayne was trying to get around the truck, he would have done it right about here and clipped the truck right around here. And they said that he immediately like laid the bike down and skid across here and um, it tore his helmet off and it caused head injuries, liver injuries, and internal bleeding. And that's, that's what ended up killing him about three hours later at the hospital. Now I'll tell you what's really weird and really crazy is that this happened in 1971 on October 29th, almost a year to the day. Early part of November, the next year, his bandmate Barry Oakley would have a very similar crash on his motorcycle and he would also die and they would end up being buried together. So let's go take a look at where that crash site was. It's literally three blocks away from here. So this curve right here is where Barry's motorcycle accident happened just one year almost to the day later. He was coming around this curve and was going a little too fast and his motorcycle hit the side of a city bus and bounced off and then hit it again. He actually hit that bus twice and um, was really shaken up afterward and, and in fact was like in pain, had injuries and just decided, hey, I'm just gonna shake it off and didn't go to the hospital. And then later on in the day, he was feeling really bad and his friends um, carried him to the hospital where he died pretty much instantly upon coming in from internal bleeding. Now here's what's weird. Dwayne Allman had not been buried yet, and the two would end up being buried, be buried side by side. I do find it sad that a town that loves the Allman Brothers so much has no memorial, no flowers, no nothing out there. There's the big house again. We're passing by it. So now we're gonna head off and we're going to find the location where they took the cover of the self-titled Allman Brothers album. Now this is what we're looking for. You can see the whole band lined up and you can see those columns on the side. So it would have been shot from the left side of the building. Would have taken that here at Robert McDunphy Center for Strings, founded in 1855, from the side. Let's go. First I was like, I wonder if they 
care or know that that was taken here, that photo, because I was seeing all this stuff for the Robert McDunphy, and then I looked right here and see this little stained glass mushroom. So I'll go down here. There's my mom, and she is standing. So by looking at the photo, it looks like uh, Greg would have been right over here, and then you would have had Barry next to him, JMO, and then Dwayne would have been roughly right here with Dickie Betts behind him, and then Barry Oakley over here. Or no, Butch Truck's over there. That would have been Butch Truck, so I'll put the cover right here. Here we are, Rose Hill Cemetery, not too far from the big house, and we have quite a bit to find while we're here. This cemetery seems like it was made for horse and buggy. We've had some really, really bad luck with very narrow streets here. Now the directions that we found took us to here where it goes in like a bit of a teardrop road shape to the Bond grave. And that's not exactly what we're looking for. We're actually looking for what's below it. So we're gonna take this and see where the band took some of their earliest promotional photos. And we were told that to find it, you actually had to walk down the stairs and you'd see the train tracks, which we see, and the water. Now, if you take a look at the band, this was, they ended up not using this for the uh, first album cover, I don't believe. I think they used it in the notes. That was taken right there. You can even see where the band members have been standing in there and people have drawn a mushroom and wrote the Almond Brothers inside, so that's kind of a dead giveaway. People are taking pieces of the brick too, it looks like. The cemetery is literally so old, it's literally falling apart. It's just, but that's, that's incredible. Then my mom pointed out that this would have been where they took this other photo. Check this out. We're guessing that's where this photo would have been taken. Then here's a shot where they changed up where they're standing and there's Dwayne and Greg up there in the archway. They would have been right there exactly. So obviously with mom's dream being the Almond Brothers experience, you gotta get her photo in front of it and there she is. And I'll put me in the picture too. Now right over here we see a statue of a young little girl named Martha Ellis and she is who uh, everyone has always considered to be the little Martha from the song, the Almond Brothers Band song. Now, Barry Oakley's sister says that that wasn't exactly the case, said that little Martha was an ex-girlfriend of Barry's, but everyone comes here because they say that this is little Martha. All the fans come here to pay respects to little Martha because of the song, so we will too. Our baby. Which, it's a great song, by the way. So if you know the instrumental song by the Almond Brothers Band, in memory of Elizabeth Reed, this is Elizabeth Reed. Now the irony of it is that they wrote this song based off of seeing this headstone, and literally they would end up being buried right if you go right around this tree, they're actually buried right on the other side there. That's how close they would eventually be to Elizabeth Reed. Now her name was actually, the name on the headstone is Napier. But right there, Elizabeth Jones Reed. And you can see how many people come out to visit. And this is a fantastic song. This is just, I mean, Go put it on when this vlog is over and listen to Little Martha and In Memory of Elizabeth Reed. I think you'll, I think you'll totally be blown away by it. We're working our way down. They're actually buried right in here. 
they recently put fences up because uh, family members are having problems with desecration of the markers and things. Well, I'm kind of surprised by this, but check that out. So, here's Gregory. I'll give my mom her time over here first while we go over and come over here to Dwayne and his brother Barry Oakley. Now, <clears throat> When Dwayne died, they had a funeral service where 300 people showed up and they had Dwayne's guitar case out in front with flowers and um, Greg sang The Sky Is Crying and then the band together did Statesboro Blues in memory of Elizabeth Reed. And um, one of the sad things is that Dwayne wasn't buried right away because of some sort of legal disputes and money disputes they actually had him re refrigerated for like a year and um, what also is sad if you think about it when the band was paying tribute at the services to Dwayne their brother Barry Oakley was there he's buried right here he would die exactly one year later and at that service had no idea that he would be shortly joining his brother in the band Dwayne so what ended up happening and you'll see here it says and the road goes on forever our brother B.O. is that um, by the time that Barry had died supposedly all the legal issues had been cleared up and so they decided to lay Barry and Dwayne side by side with matching headstones as we saw. Only difference is really being that Dwayne Almonds has the guitar on it, whereas Barry's has the bass. So on Dwayne's it says, much like the letter that we read yesterday, inside of his bedroom at the big house it says I love being alive and I will be the best man I possibly can I will take love wherever I find it and offer it to everyone who will take it seek knowledge from those wiser and teach those who wish to learn from me and then here at the end is a little angel and underneath the angel it says Galadriel, his daughter. Now over here on Barry's, he also has an angel watching over him. It says Brittany, his little daughter who was on the cover of Brothers and Sisters. And sadly that was, they said that after Dwayne passed away because Dwayne was always kind of the visionary of the band when they started working on Brothers and Sisters, Barry took the leadership role. He was the visionary. He was the one that was kind of taking over. And then he would pass away on a motorcycle in a crash not far, as we saw today from where Dwayne passed away just a year before. Help thy brother's boat across, and lo, thine own has reached the shore. Now, of course, over the years, Greg and Dickie Betts kept the band going, and Greg paid tribute to Dwayne as often as he could, really. I mean, when he would record albums, he would do Dark End of the Street, which he said was Dwayne's favorite song. And uh, I remember reading an interview with Greg where he was saying that when he recorded that, I think it was in Guitar Player, Guitar World, something like that, when he was in the studio, he said he had a hard time recording that because it just made him cry every time he he would do it he would think of think of Dwayne so the necklace that I ended up getting my mom at the big house yesterday actually had that right there on it and it was made with one of Greg's guitar strings and here he's laid to rest just 
a little over two years ago and I was telling my mom, you know, we kind of picked the right time because they just about a month ago put his headstone out here. So now it says, again, the morning's come. Again, he's on the run. Sunbeams shining through his hair. Appearing not to have a care. We'll pick up your gear and gypsy roll on. Roll on. Sweet Melissa. Now one thing my mom and I didn't realize, we thought, hey, we'll be able to buy a silver dollar and leave it for the Midnight Rider. And we looked and looked and looked and could not find a silver dollar. And apparently, you have to go through the US Mint now to get those because they don't like to make money out of actual silver and gold. So we did as close as we could. So now you've seen what the grave of Greg and Dwayne and Barry look like. This is what it used to look like before they made the fence that went all the way around. The stairs actually used to go right through the middle. Now one of the coolest things I was ever able to do for my mom was when um, Greg wrote a book a few years ago and I found out that he was going to be at Book Soup in Los Angeles and so I went to his book signing and I said, Greg, my mom's birthday is tomorrow. Is there any way you could wish her a happy birthday? So I hit record on my phone and he did say happy birthday to her and um and i got a 160 dollars parking ticket for parking there that day so it was a pretty expensive meet and greet mushrooms forever Dwayne. howard Dwayne allman look at that not even 25. not even 25 years old and look how old Barry Oakley was. Same age. 24 years old. For Dwayne. I just noticed if you look at the side of the headstone, put little mushrooms in there. <laughs> little magic mushrooms. Well, my friend, if you're an Almond Brothers band fan, I hope you enjoyed this. If you're a Greg Almond fan, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this if you just play guitar or if you just respect good musicians you should have enjoyed this if you are looking for any recommendations for the almond brothers band song wise i would say the whipping post melissa memory of elizabeth reed little martha all those songs are great as far as albums you can't go wrong with the self-titled eat a peach um, they were all great brothers and sisters Anything from that early 70s era I think was really fantastic. And then of course, Greg had the I'm No Angel and all those great solo records, so we'll call it a day here. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night. And uh, take care, Midnight Rider. One more silver dollar. Not gonna let him catch me, Lord. Not gonna let them catch the midnight ride. Yeah.